Good morning. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, we pray God's blessing upon you this morning and that he'll touch you in a special way. If you haven't done so already, check in on Facebook. Let them know you're here. Invite them next week. Uh, tell them that they're going to miss a grand time after church as we go out and have our church picnic. I hope that all of y'all are planning on going and uh, being a part of that. I, I think they have 5,000 uh, pigs that they've uh, roasted. Um, you know, 400 fatted calves and uh, all other kinds of things out there. They've been posting pictures and it uh, looks awfully good. So I hope you'll all uh, go and be a part of that. There are directions out there on the um, table uh, as you leave uh, today. You can pick up one of those. And as you go out there, uh, you can also sign up for the Dulac mission trip uh, and also paint uh, your heart out. So uh, uh, paint your heart out is coming up real quick. It's May 13th. Uh, so uh, if you'd like to be a part of that, you can uh, sign up out there. Uh, and then the Dulac mission trip is going to be June 10th through 16th. Hope that you can all be a part of that wonderful uh, mission opportunities with that. Also, you may or may not know that we have started a uh, prayer service on Fridays uh, from uh, 12 to 1, uh, noon to 1 p.m. Uh, and so everyone's invited to come and be part of that wonderful service. Uh, we have scripture readings and prayer times uh, that go on with that. So uh, if you'd like to be a part, just come on uh, every Friday uh, and be part of that uh, prayer service. Uh, and we're so glad that they are uh, doing that. Also, I want you to know that uh, there uh, is not going to be another uh, party for the Joy Sunday School class uh, officially here at the church, but I'm sure that those people People will be out partying uh, Friday night anyway because that's just kind of how they are. Uh, and um, the Faith Hope Circle is going to meet tomorrow at 1 p.m. in the parlor. So if you're in the Faith Hope Circle, uh, know that you will be meeting tomorrow at 1 p.m. Uh, with that. So uh, just make note of that. Are there any other announcements that uh, we need to share this morning? Okay, let's all stand for our call to worship. the Lord who guides me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. No wonder my heart is glad and I rejoice. My body rests in safety. You will show me the way of life, granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasures of living with you forever. Our first hymn is number 322, Up from the Grave He Arose. Let's remain standing as we join together in singing hymn 322. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
Let's remain standing as we join together in professing our Christian faith by saying the historic Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead, He ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated, and will the children please come down now for our children's moment? Good morning. How are y'all today? Good. I had a really good friend of mine. Get keep, that's right, pop. A really good girlfriend of mine gave me this Diet Coke. Coke, that's right. It sounds delicious. It does sound delicious right now, doesn't it? What, what is supposed to be in this can? Coke. Coke. Yeah, Coke. What color is it supposed to be? Brown. Are you sure it's not orange? It's not clear? Lemon pop? Just like coffee. It is the color of coffee. Are you sure... That Diet Coke is in this can? Are you sure? Well, how would it be empty? I dropped it, so there's a ding on it. Are there holes in it? It's not open, so there should be something in here. What if I was to tell you that there's nothing in this can? Would you believe me? You would? It has a picture on it, but, th but what if I said there's nothing? Aiden, do you believe me if I said there's nothing in this can, even though it's never been opened? There's, maybe there is something inside. There's nothing, there's no hole that hasn't been opened. Hold that for me. It's empty. Y'all didn't doubt me today. This isn't going how I thought it was going to go. <laughs> Y'all were supposed to say, no, there's Coke in there. But <laughs> I'm going to tell you a story about a person who didn't believe one time. And his name was Thomas. And he's commonly referred to as Doubting Thomas. He was one of Jesus' disciples. But on the Sunday after the Sunday that Jesus rose, all the disciples that saw Jesus told Thomas wasn't there. So they told Thomas about... Jesus being alive. And you know what Thomas did? He didn't, he didn't believe. He, he said, I didn't, he said, I won't believe it until I see it with my own eyes. I want to put my finger in the nail prints on his hand. He didn't believe the, his friends. So, guess what happened? A little while later, guess who showed up? Jesus did. And he invited Thomas to touch the holes in his hands and the hole in his side. And he said, now you believe. <clears throat> he said, you, now you believe because you've seen me, but blessed are those who believe and have not seen. We believe. We haven't seen Jesus, have we? We haven't seen the man. We haven't. But we know he's there. We know he's in. We know Jesus, right? We do, and we believe. There's a lot of people who don't believe, but we do. So... We accept him by faith. That's what faith is, is we believe. 
even though we haven't seen it. Huh? There, yeah, there's a few people that don't believe, but we believe and we do it by faith. And that's what we have, is we have the faith. And that's what we will always have, right? Okay, let's bow our heads and say our prayer. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of Jesus and the faith to believe in him. Amen. Let's go to Children's Church. As a people of God, we're called to pray for each other and with each other at this time of their concerns you want to lift up to the congregation. You have a good friend, uh, Tom A.G., who is in the hospital, okay? Are y'all asleep? You just... Yeah. Uh, Alice Mitchell and Carol Crager, so be in prayer for them. Other concerns? Mr. Jim Harper? Miss our pew buddy Aaron, for sure. Uh, so hopefully he can get back there soon. Other uh, concerns? Joyce? We have... Christopher's going to be 18 Wednesday. Christopher's going to be 18 Wednesday. He actually looked excited about it, too. The Middlebrooks celebrated their 75th anniversary. Polly's uh, 95th birthday. She said life begins at 95. So. Don turned. He turned 26. I can't hear with that. So uh, Don's birthday. Well, great. Did I see somebody over here? My cousin Louise is visiting from North Carolina. Okay. She will be 90 on Tuesday. She okay. She'll be 90 on Tuesday. So glad to have her here. Uh, Mickey Camp's back today. What a joy it is to have him back. Jim Beam will be 78 tomorrow. He kind of looked excited too. <laughs> So uh, they went and took Larry O'Dell, his prayer uh, quilt this week, and they said he looked really good, but I don't believe you if you say he looked good. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I've ever known Larry to look good. He maybe looks well, but... <laughs> okay, that's too much information. <laughs> Other joys and concerns. <laughs> Twelve to four this Saturday is music in the park over at the uh, Southern Hills Park, uh, right over there. So hope you will all come and be a part of that. And we will have a booth there, so stop by and say hi. All right, let's bow our heads and hearts in prayer. <coughs> Loving Lord, we thank You so much that You are alive, that You rose from the grave, and that You visit each and every one of us. We pray that You would breathe Your Holy Spirit upon this service, upon this time, upon each and every one of us right now. Just breathe Your Spirit over us. 
and grant us your peace. Allow that breath just to fill us and inspire us and to speak to us and open our eyes to your presence today. We come today to have all of our doubts alleviated to truly believe in the risen Christ, to put our hands uh, into Your side and touch the wounds that are in Your hands, to, to know without a doubt and to believe and have the faith that makes us move mountains. Fill us with that faith today and every day. And in those moments when we have doubts, Lord, whisper in our ears, lift us up when we feel weak, strengthen our, our weary legs, and, and help us to, to continue to run the race that is set before us. Help us always to look to Jesus to see how we can live our lives. Help the belief that we have in Him transform us and change us and, and make us just like You. And help us to heed the call in our lives to go out into the world and spread the good news for, for all the world to hear. May we run from this place declaring that He is alive. He is risen. Our Lord and our God. All of this we pray in the name of our Lord and God, Jesus. And we pray the prayer that He taught us by saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you would, open up your Bibles to 1 Peter, chapter 1. We'll be reading from verses 3 through 9. If you're using an electronic version of the Bible, I use the New Living Translation. If you don't have a Bible, uh, we have some in the office that we'll give you for free. First Peter 1, verses 3 through 9. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by His great mercy that we have been born again. Because God raised Jesus from the dead. Now we live with great expectation. And we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. And through your faith, God is protecting you by His power until you receive this salvation, which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. So be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead. Even though you have to endure many trials for a little while, these trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire test and purifies gold. Through your faith is though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day in which Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. You love Him even though you have never seen Him. Though you do not see Him now, you trust Him. And you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. The reward for trusting Him will be the salvation of your souls. The Word of God for the people of God. Would the ushers please come down now as we worship God with His ties and our offerings above those ties. Let us pray. The Lord, You reveal Yourself to us. And we trust in the faith that You have given us. And now we give back to You Your tithes and our offerings above those tithes. Help us as a church to use them to declare the goodness of Your mercy, Your love, and Your grace. 
so the world may see who Jesus Christ is and have faith in Him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We join in our next hymn, Alas, and Did My Savior Bleed, number 294. Let's remain standing.
about that. We got the wrong numbers in, and then it's in the book, in the hymnal twice, and we got the wrong one on the screen. <laughs> but you heard me sing a solo in the middle. Thank you. <laughs> That's why we pay you the big bucks. That's right. <laughs> uh, I think we're sitting now, so yeah. please be seated. We can sit. Our next scripture reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. John 20, 19 through 31. That Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and his side. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Again, he said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. One of the disciples, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, was not with the others when Jesus came. They told him, We have seen the Lord. But he replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands, put my fingers into them, and place my hand into the wound in his side. Eight days later, the disciples were together again, and this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. My Lord, my God, Thomas explained. Then Jesus told him, You believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. The disciples saw Jesus do many other miraculous signs in addition to the other ones recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in Him you will have life by the power of His name. The Word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts, all of our souls, and all of our minds May they be truly and utterly faithful to Your Word, O Lord our God. And we pray that You would fill us with Your Spirit and Your peace and that any doubts we may have will be cast away because of our faith in You. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. I believe, I believe that what we believe shapes who we are. It shapes how we act, how we treat other people, how we spend our money, how the words that come out of our mouth, it shapes everything about who we are. Our beliefs shape us. They transform us. They make us who we are. There was once a college student who was uh, in speech class and the professor gave them an assignment that they were to do a speech that would convince the whole class about anything, any particular topic. They, They got to decide what it was and it was their job to give a speech and they would be graded on if the class believed them or not. One of the students, uh, who was a physics student, decided that he was going to teach the class about the physics of a pendulum. Uh, And he wanted them to believe uh, that when you have a pendulum and you put it up to the top part, that after you release it, it will never go any further 
back up because of wind, because of resistance, because of all of the different things that it would slowly get shorter and shorter and shorter. So he stood up in front of the class and uh, he talked to them for about 10 minutes about the physics of a pendulum. Uh, he explained it very well. He had a PowerPoint presentation and, and everything. And, and after he had spent 10 minutes explaining it to him, he, he got a little toy out, a, a little kid's toy with a metal pendulum down at the bottom. And, and he, he, he taped it to the chalkboard. <coughs> And he took that pendulum and he put it up here and he got a little line and he marked it. This is where the pendulum's going to start. So he put it and he dropped it. And that pendulum swung to the other side. And then when it came back, he marked where it hit again. And then it went back and he marked where it came again. And it went back and he marked when it came again. And then it went back and it marked where it came again. And he said, now I want you to know that and believe that when you put a pendulum in one point, it's never going to hit that point again. That it's never going to come back and hit right here again. It's going to just come up and then go down and it's going to go. How many of y'all believe the physics of the pendulum? And all the people in the class were like, oh, I believe, I believe that, that, that that's what's going to happen when you have a pendulum and everything. And, and, and the professor was like, well, very good. You know, I, I believe too. I, I think that that's very good. So he got up to go and, and continue the class and the student was like, well, no, no, no. I'm not quite through yet. Now, Professor, would you come up here? And, and, and he got a chair and he put it onto a table. And he put the chair here and he said, I want you, Professor, to sit in this chair. So the professor, he got up and they had some blocks and he got up onto the table and he sat in the chair and, and he was facing out this way. And the student pulled out a ladder and he climbed up on the ladder and over there was a beam up above the class here and he pulled down from the top of a beam a weight that was 200 pounds and it was attached to that beam with some nylon parachute rope. And, and he got that uh, uh, weight. He said, all right, professor, do you believe in the physics of a pendulum? And the professor said, I believe in the physics of the pendulum. So he got that 200 pound weight he brought it over to the professor's face right here and put it right into the professor's face, just right there. And so he said, all right. And he let go. And man, that pendulum started swinging. Man, it got some speed on it. 200 pounds going through this thing. And it went up and it went way up into the air on this side. And the whole class sat there and they were looking. And that pendulum started coming back. And when the pendulum got about right here, that professor jumped off the table onto the floor. And uh, he said, now class, do you believe that the professor believed in the physics of the pendulum? And they said, no, he doesn't believe at all. And he said, and that's what I wanted you to know today. And he got an A on that test uh, for that speech. Uh, but that professor's belief didn't quite fit up with what he was saying. It, it, it didn't, didn't measure up, did it? Because if he would have truly believed that that pendulum was not going to come back and hit him in the face, he would have sat there just as pleased and happy and peaceful because he knew that that pendulum was going to swing and it was going to come back and it would come right here. As long as he didn't do that, he'd be okay. But he, his belief didn't measure up to the truth. Our beliefs shape who we are and how we live our lives. And the story we read today is a story about a person who kind of has a bad rap, I think, in the Scripture. I, I, I mean, when people say his name, I mean, it says that Thomas' uh, nickname was the twin, right? Um, but his other nickname is what? Yeah. How would you forever in the history of the world want to be known as Doubting Mark, or Doubting Sue, or Doubting Tom. I mean, for the rest, as long as the world exists, this poor disciple is going to be marked as Doubting Thomas. But is that really the truth of the story? Well, we go to Easter morning, and, and uh, the women went to Jesus' tomb, right? They go to Jesus' tomb, Mary's there, she goes, and the tomb is empty. She runs back to tell the disciples and says, The Lord is risen. I've seen Him. And what does Peter do? What does the disciple that Jesus loved 
do? Do they believe them right then and there? Do they? What do they do? They run back to the tomb to see for themselves that the tomb is empty. Do you think as they ran towards that tomb, they were full of faith? Do you think that they believed what those women told them, even though they had seen it themselves? Do you think that they believed that Jesus really was alive? And the reason that they ran so fast to the tomb was what? They wanted to see the proof in the pudding for themselves. I mean, can you blame them? We would have wanted to do the same thing, right? And when they get to the tomb, the disciple that Jesus loved got there first. He stopped outside, right? Then Peter comes right after him. And Peter busts into there. And when he saw the cloth, what does the Scripture say? He believed. It wasn't until he saw inside the tomb that his belief was full. So that night, uh, resurrection morning, uh, the resurrection night, uh, the disciples are gathered together in the upper room. And the, 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 the Scripture tells us that the door was locked. Why? Because they were afraid. You would think that if they really truly believed what they had seen and what they had heard, they might not be so scared. But, I mean, do you blame them? There they are. The person who they thought was the Messiah, who they thought had come to save the world, had died the most excruciating death known to human beings even today. A death on the cross. They saw Him die. They saw His blood shed. They saw Him and put Him into the tomb. Actually, they had run away, right? They didn't see all that because they were already scared. They were scared for their life. They thought that this was going to happen to them. And they weren't willing to do that at that point, right? And they all ran away. And here they are in a room, doors locked, scared to death, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, there He is. Jesus Himself is there in the room, and He speaks some words to them that He speaks to us all the time in our lives as well, and that is, peace be with you. Peace be with you. He knew what that was going on in their hearts. He knew what was happening in their lives. He knew that their world was upside down. And He came to speak to them words of comfort and peace. And He says, peace be with you. And then He breathes upon them the Holy Spirit. And I can't imagine what it must have felt like for them to receive the Holy Spirit directly right there upon them to give them some of that peace. Well, Thomas... We don't know where Thomas was when they were all meeting with the door locked. We don't know where Thomas was. Maybe he was so scared he didn't even want to be with them. Maybe he had run further away than the other disciples. We don't know. It's left up to our imagination about where Thomas really was at that point. But when he finally comes to uh, greet ten of his best friends, ten of his best friends who he had spent three years traveling with all over. Uh, he had traveled with them. He had ate with them. He had slept with them. He knew everything about them. They knew everything about him. And yet he wouldn't believe what they had to say about Jesus Christ. They said, Thomas, you won't believe. And he didn't. Thomas, you won't believe that Jesus is alive. He came here. The door was locked. He came in here. He showed us his hands. He showed us his side. He showed us who he was. And he spoke to us. And there he was. And Thomas looks at them. And he looks at him. He says, you know what? I'm not believing until I see those wounds myself. Until I'm there. Until Jesus is there with me. I'm not going to believe it. I mean, do you blame him? How many of y'all would have been right there with Thomas saying, Dude, I want to see for myself those nails. I want to see His side. I, this is just too amazing to comprehend. And so Thomas tells him that. And eight days later, there they are. They're in the upper room again. And the door is wide open. The windows are all up. They're having a party, right? No. The door is once again locked. Well, maybe they hadn't quite got all that faith quite yet that they thought they should have, right? Maybe they were still a little confused about what was going to happen. Do you blame them? And there they're gathered once again eight days later from Easter. will be tomorrow if we were there. And all of a sudden, doors locked. All of a sudden, they're sitting there. They're listening to the baseball game on the radio. 
uh, and, and they go, there's Jesus. And Jesus, without Thomas saying anything at all, did you notice that? That Thomas didn't say, Jesus, I want to see those things. Jesus, I want to put my hand there. I want to know, Jesus. When Jesus came into the room, He looks at Thomas and He says, Thomas, Thomas, here they are. It's what you wanted. It's what you needed. For you to believe, you needed to see this. You needed to put your hand in my side. Come on, do it. And Thomas does it, right? No. He didn't need to. When he got into the presence of the Lord, he knew who it was. He bows down on the ground and he says, My Lord and my God. And he believed. Is he still doubting? No. Should his name be Doubting Thomas? No. Why? Because he believed. He believed in the risen Christ. He believed in the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. He believed that that's Jesus. He's there with us. He believes in us. And Jesus looks at him and says, Thomas, you believe because I'm here. Blessed are those who are never going to see me. Blessed are those who aren't ever going to have to be able to put their hands in the wounds and in my side. Blessed are those who are going to believe because they're going to have faith and faith alone. Blessed are you for believing in the risen Christ. But yet, we've seen Jesus. Well, I hope you've seen Jesus. If you haven't seen Jesus, I don't know how you can believe. I mean, I see Jesus all the time. I see Jesus in you when you're out building homes, you're painting your heart out. Uh, I, I see Jesus when you're, you're out in the, the community talking to those around you. I see Jesus all the time when we break the bread and we drink the cup. I see Jesus in my prayer time. I see Jesus when I'm reading Scripture. Where do you see Jesus? Where does that belief come? Where does that peace come upon you? And, and there's a lot of people in the world who go... I. I just have these doubts. I'm not a very good Christian. I mean, I, I'm not good at all. I mean, I, I have troubles. I, I, the world throws stuff at me and I just... I, it's hard. You say, how can I be a follower of Jesus if I have these doubts? Well, folks, doubt is a natural response of being who God created us to be. All of us at some point in life are going to have doubts. Sometimes our faith is up here. Sometimes our faith is down here. Sometimes the world crashes in on us and makes our faith come down here. Sometimes it's just that's where our faith is at that point in life. We don't understand it. We don't know what's going on. We're going through all the motions. We're we're praying. We're reading Scripture. We're coming to church on Sunday. We're giving our 10% to the church. And we're sitting there and we're going, "I, I just don't feel it. But in those moments, look to God and say, God... I need you. I need you here with me. I need you to show me proof that you're there. I need you to come and breathe peace upon me. I need you to come and pray the Holy Spirit upon my life. I need you to come right now and help me through this situation. I need you right now to come and hold my hand. I need you right now to to proclaim to me that I am your heir. I need you to know right now that I'm your child. I need to know that when I die, I'm going to go to heaven. I need you to explain to me that you live. I need to know right now. Do it. And allow God to come and give you what you need. One of my favorite theologians is Frederick Buechner. And he wrote this little neat little book that's called uh, Wishful Thinking, a Theological ABCs. And he goes through different words starting with A and goes to Z. And he does his own little definition of what that word is. Uh, And when you turn to D and you go down a little bit, there's a little uh, definition of doubt. And this is what Frederick Buechner writes in his little theological ABC book about doubt. Doubt. He says, whether your faith is there in God or that there is not a God, if you don't have any doubts, you're either kidding yourself or you're asleep. Isn't that great? I'm going to say that again. Whether your faith is that there is a God or that there is not a God, if you don't have any doubts, you're either kidding yourself are asleep. Doubts are the ants in the pants of faith. They keep it awake and alive and moving. What happens when you get ants in your pants? Let's say there's an ant pile right here and you sit down and you're eating your peanut butter sandwich and it's really good and all of a sudden you feel those ants in your pants. What do you do? 
you sit there. <laughs> you finish your sandwich. You ask for somebody to bring you a lemonade. You wait for them to write. No, if you feel ants in your pants, what do you do? You jump up. You start slapping. You falls on the ground. <laughs> Let me put it in my pocket. Uh, you, you rip off your clothes. You go to the water hose. You jump into the pool. You jump into the lake. You do whatever you can. Is this working? <laughs> uh, you do whatever you can to get away from those ants, right? And that's what doubt is for us. Let me pull this up a little bit. Remind me not to have ants in my pants again during this time. <laughs> Do what? <laughs> Am I straight? Okay. You can't be straight when you have ants in your pants. You got to get moving. You got to run. You got to get them out of there, right? And that's the way it is with doubt in our life with God. We're going to have those doubts. We're going to have those times of highs. We're going to have those times of lows. And through it all, Jesus Christ is there reaching out to us, showing us the wounds, showing us the, 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 the part in His side. And He's breathing on us saying, Peace. I want you to have my peace. You're my child. Don't have those doubts during this time. Yes, there's going to be good times. Yes, you're going to have trials. Yes, there's going to be hardship. Yes, you're going to not understand what's happening. Yes, you're going to be mad at me. You're going to be mad at my father. You're going to be mad at the world. Yes, you're going to have those problems. Yes, people are going to treat you poorly. But your belief is going to dictate how you treat those people and how you act in those times, how you live out your life. Uh, and when that pendulum swings up to our face, we know that without a doubt it's not going to smack us in the face because we believe. We believe that God came into the world, gave His life on a cross for our sins, and that when we die, we go to heaven. It has nothing to do with how good we are because none of us are any good to get there. It doesn't matter whether or not we have a faith that moves mountain or we have doubts that keep us below the mountain. Jesus Christ is always there and wants to come and give Himself fully and completely to you so that your faith can be made whole and that you would have life and life abundant. Are you willing to stand up with Thomas and say, I believe? Are you willing to go out into the world and shout, I believe He is risen. He is risen indeed. What does your belief say about who God is and whose you are? Let us pray. God, we come this morning and we declare simply that sometimes our doubts overshadow our faith. Sometimes we run from you just like the disciples ran at the cross. Sometimes we hide behind locked doors. Sometimes we don't even want to listen when you speak. Because we don't want to be changed. The Lord, we come this morning declaring our belief in Your Son, Jesus Christ. We come here this morning saying that we are Yours. And Heavenly Father, if, if there is anyone here this morning who just is thinking to themselves, I, I just can't believe this stuff, let Jesus Christ appear to them behind their locked doors in their fear, in their doubt, in their anger, in their hurt. Lord, come right now and, and appear to them and breathe Your peace upon their life. We ask Your Holy Spirit to come upon us right now. Breathe upon us. And we just receive that Spirit. We receive that breath. We receive your presence in our midst so that no matter what we're going through in life, we know you're there. 
we know that we're not alone. We know you're holding our hand. Your hand with that nail hole in it is reaching out to us saying, come to me, all you who are weary and need rest. I will give you that rest. Lord, we come this morning to receive that rest. Let us receive it. You're offering it all the time, but we push it away. This morning, with open arms, we open our arms to You and we say, Lord, we receive it. We want it. We, we want You. We want those doubts to go away. We want Your presence here. We want You to do miracles. We want You to change lives. We want our beliefs to change who we are. We want our beliefs to change the world. We want our beliefs to change Southern Hills. We want our beliefs to change our homes, our marriages, our schools. We want our beliefs to change everything so that Your kingdom would be here on earth as it is in heaven. And Lord, we look forward to that day when that's the way it is. And, and we ask for it. And we ask that You use each of us to use each of us to bring Your kingdom here on earth. And sure, we're, we don't have it all. We, we don't know it all yet. Just like the disciples didn't know it. But You're empowering us to grow, to mature, to be transformed. Help us to be that diamond that You know that we can be to shine for all the world. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. During our last hymn, we invite you to come to the altar and pray. Um, if you need me to pray with you, come tell me. Otherwise, I'm just going to let you pray at the altar by yourself. Maybe this morning, Jesus Christ broke into your heart and said, Get those doubts away. Come to me. You can come down this morning and say, Jesus, I want to be your follower. I want to be your child. I want to serve you. I want to know you. We invite you to come down during this hymn and, and do that. Maybe uh, you uh, have been visiting this church for a while and you like to become part of this church family. You can come down during this song, become part of this church family. There's a card in your pew rack. You can fill that out. Uh, bring that down with you and become part of this church family. However God is inviting you to respond, we pray that you will, but let's all stand together as we sing joyfully our last hymn. Rejoice!
we joy so great, shun lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King. The hope of all who seek Him, the help of all who find. None other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along the stairway. He lives, He lives, salvation to Him. This morning, actually it happened last Sunday on Easter Sunday, Anna Smith came to be uh, a member with us, uh, but she was on the front row and couldn't get out there in time to give me the card. Uh, so uh, this morning, uh, we simply ask her uh, these questions. She's coming from another Christian uh, denomination. Uh, so we just simply ask her this, uh, do you love Jesus Christ and will you show that love to others by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? I will. And then I ask you, her new church family, do you love Jesus Christ? And will you show that love to Anna and all those you come in contact with by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Y'all yeah. mm. <laughs> still going on to perfection with that. Uh, the Holy Spirit's still moving in your life. You'll, you'll, you'll be more enthusiastic about that as it goes. Uh, Anna has, sits up here on the front row, uh, came over with the pumpkin patch, I think, for the first time, and that's how she was introduced uh, to our church. So uh, y'all come introduce yourself to her. Uh, give her a big hug. Welcome her like you welcome everybody. And, uh, and then you can go out to the uh, picnic, drive safe. Hopefully you can figure out uh, Tim's directions. Uh, if you can't, he's got his phone number under there, and you can call. Uh, to be part of that great picnic that we're going to be having. So let us go now into the world believing that we are Christ, that He is alive, and that we will serve Him forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ we go. Amen. Amen.